we just did an eight hour test motor. Oh. Did the engine just do something for me? We're running from the jerry cans directly to the engine right now with the return going in as well. And the purpose of doing that is so that if it happens again, we know it's not our fuel lines. We know it's got to be something from uh, the beginning of that fuel line to the engine, which makes it much more likely there's something playing up on the engine. We're hoping that's not the case, but we need to rule it out. Um, and then we'll basically work our way back bit by bit towards the fuel tank so that we can hopefully isolate where the problem is. Because the thing with starved fuel situations like this is that there's, or depowering like what's happening, there's like so, so many things that be co could be causing a problem. We've heard of some people that have literally had like, someone stood on the hose before installation and it had like a tiny crack in it you can't even see and then that's the problem. Or one of the fittings has a tiny crack or the Raycor seal has like a little bump in it. You know, it, it can be such minor things that we really have to try and isolate an area to look at. Um, otherwise, you're just kind of chasing a million different problems and then you never know if you fixed it or not, especially a problem like this that can take some time to occur. So that's the plan. We just discovered something important about our handhelds. Now we can hear. Now we cannot. Now we can hear. Now we cannot. Two fed is blocking it. Um, so that's good to know. To recap last episode, after some basic diagnostics, we ran the engine without the diesel pump in the line to see if it was the cause of our fuel problems. After eight hours of motoring, the engine failed again, which meant it was something else causing the issue. moving the boat we ran it for an hour on the dock before we left too just to get get air warmed up um, which we wouldn't normally do but because it's like a time factor we're trying to get as much hours in as we can without having to you know be going um, yeah so it's basically probably six hours of motoring total right now but five hours 17 where we've actually been physically pushing the boat through the water we have a little friend motoring along with us Since you guys can't see Chuff sail, you may as well watch our friend Steve sail while we're just motoring around. His boat's only been in the water around the same time as Chuff, and so far, his tests have gone very well. into the breakwater. Wish us luck. Alrighty. We have been motoring for seven hours and 40 minutes in the water and the engine's been on for like an hour on top of that. So we've basically exceeded 
the time it took to fail last time by about 40 minutes. So we're hoping that means we've ruled out a primary problem on the engine. Uh, and then the next step is probably to hook the Raycor back up and more or less repeat and see if it fails. And if it does, then at least we know it's the Raycor and go from there. Um, yeah. I won't say it's been a fun day, but it's not been, <laughs> Chip's laughing at me, but it's, it's not been so bad. It's just like, it's really choppy right now and the swell's really big right now. It's not a day you would choose to motor around. You would maybe choose to sail in that kind of chop. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's a process. Respect the process, is that what it is? Trust. Trust the process, we have to trust the process. So yeah, anyway, we're gonna head back to the docks now and hopefully El Maquina, La Maquina doesn't decide to conk out when we're in the narrow parts of the bay, but I think we are good. The Yanmar was due for its 50 hour service, so we decided to do it before doing any more tests. Alright, so we are about to do the 50 hour maintenance on the engine. The first thing we're going to do is check the throttle cable, it can stretch out over time, so just make sure that it's going to the positions we expect in um, like neutral and forward and reverse and high and low. Um, and then we will do the, we need to do the engine oil, the engine oil filter and the marine, uh, the gear, the gear oil. Um, and then we'll just also check bolts, tie in bolts, check the alignment, all that stuff. So, engine maintenance day. Okay, if you go into forward first, you just go a little bit to start with. First, I'm just gonna do a hose clamp, che hose clamp check and literally just give them all like the winciest little tighten, just in case they've gotten a bit loose. Okay, all right, I'm holding this. Jim's coming in too. That's squishy. So, we're gonna change the oil. So we take out our dipstick. So we have this little pumpy thing that attaches here that pumps out the oil. And I should well mention too, we did actually run the engine just for 10 minutes before we did this. Uh, we let it cool for a good hour, I reckon. Um, but doing this while the oil's like, hot is much easier, it's much more like viscous, so it's easier to suck through, not so thick. thing is filling, I was just saying, most things on a boat you learn best because you do it wrong the first time. Um, now is a good time to change the oil filter because there's no oil in the, uh, in the tank, which means that when I change the oil filter, not so much oil is going to drain out. I made the mistake once of doing this entire part and refilling it and then trying to change the oil filter and it was like pretty messy. Anyway, apparently it can be pretty hard to get the um, factory put on oil filter off, so we'll see how that goes. But we have a bucket we're going to try and use to keep it as neat as possible. They're never in the easiest spot to get to. Doesn't look like it's leaking a lot of oil. Did it go into the bucket? It did. Good. <laughs> and there's oil leaking down the side. So this is the new one, and the main thing is we're just gonna rub a little oil around its gasket before we put it on. Let's see if you can get that one on. Oh, 
And basically they say to do is do it kind of like hand tight and then one full extra turn with the um, instru instrument. So now it's time to do the um, transmission or the gear oil. Worked. This is fun. We also checked belt tightness and engine alignment during this service. With the maintenance done, we continued troubleshooting our fuel system. Our first test was simply running it on the dock from a jerry can through the Raycor to the engine to try and work out if the problem may have been coming from the Raycor filter. from the jerry jug through the Raycor. We even shook it and let air bubbles come out. A lot of air bubbles came, but it didn't stop the engine. Ah, uh, yeah, nothing happened. More testing to be done. All right, here's where we're at. Jim's cleaning the boat. We're packing chuffed up and we're getting ready for a road trip. We have done our very best to chase down the problems with the engine and we cannot work out exactly where the problem is. We know air is entering the rake or we've had to do a lot of testing on the dock instead of out at sea because um, there's been a lot of bad weather systems floating around so we haven't been able to go out. And we know we're getting air bubbles in the rake core, but we haven't been able to reproduce the engine failing. So we can't figure out exactly why or where that's coming from. So our plan is essentially to replace the fuel lines and the um, everything within the rake core to get, make sure there is absolutely no air leaks, get the fuel polished. And then we will know that there's no trash floating around in the tank. It's not an air leak. And uh, hopefully we fix the problem. We're like 99% sure we've talked to a bunch of technicians from Yanma and rake core and we're pretty sure this will fix the problem. However, it's gonna take quite some time to get new parts to do that. And for those of you that follow the weather off the coast, it is the end of May and already there is a nasty storm forming off the coast of Canawatulco and Acapulco here in Mexico. Um, and essentially we feel like we've kind of run out of time to move chuffed and we just feel like it's not the right decision. So instead, we're going on a road trip and it's gonna be awesome because we're working with multiple different animal organizations, um, two in San Cristobal, and then we're going back to San Fr um, Surface for Strays in Zihuatanejo. Um, they're about to undergo a bit of a transition, so it's gonna be a really important time for us to be there. Um, we're gonna be going through some beautiful landscapes. Um, we're gonna be going through multiple states of Mexico. We're gonna be in Van Rico. He might not be quite as cool as Chuff, but he's still pretty awesome. Um, and yeah, we're going to be back to doing animal projects, which is our main passion. So it's going to be really cool. We're excited to take you all on this giant road trip. It'll be a little bit sad saying goodbye to Chuffed again for a little while, but it's going to be really, really cool. Chuffed is out of the water and stored safely for hurricane season. While she managed to avoid the storms, we drove right along the edge of a hurricane on our way to San Cristobal. San Cristobal is a beautiful colonial town where we were able to begin our work with local animal rescue organisations. Thanks to our patrons who support our mission to help animals in need. Next episode is going to be jam-packed. Until then, stay chuffed everybody.